Good afternoon guys and what is becoming a fast and furious transfer window is getting more and more intense and more and more deals are happening. There isn't enough caffeine to go around to keep us going here because Arsenal, they are no joke. I told you this earlier on, I told you a few weeks ago that Arsenal are going for it this window. They want to silence those who say that last season was their best chance at a window and they are going for it. Four deals currently ongoing, nearly £200 million being spent. But it's just not just them I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about Chelsea as well. We touch on Caicedo and what is happening there. United, who are they going for up front? What's happening with David Rea and Spurs? as talks are ongoing but difficult, of course. Then Hongland Son, could he be away? Could Son leave the Premier League for a Saudi Billions offer? Who knows? Of course, I'm also going to talk to you, Luton fans and Burnley fans too. It's not just the big fish here. We try to cover as much as we possibly can. Let's start with Arsenal though. Talks currently ongoing. We'll go with Declan Rice. Next bid set to arrive. Touching that 100 million mark, not quite there yet. We knew that this was going to be multiple offers, a bit like the Mudrick scenario, although we do expect Arsenal to push this one further than what they did with Mudrick. They know that Declan Rice wants to move there. They know they have a verbal agreement on terms from Declan Rice and the role he's going to play and are very calm and confident at this point in time. West Ham, of course, trying to wait for Manchester City to enter the race to entice more bidders to get that figure up, which is their right, of course, as the selling club. But Arsenal extremely calm because they do not believe that Declan Rice would have any interest in going to Manchester City. So that is set to, set to continue this week with another bid set to come in imminently for Declan Rice. They're also pushing on Romeo Lavia. I spoke the other day about Manchester United's ties to Lavia through, through Jadon Sancho having the same agent. Arsenal, of course, have the same agent uh, with Bikeo Saka um, and Eddie Nketiah. They both have the same agent as Lavia too. So Arsenal now pushing on that, which might annoy some Chelsea fans because they have done a lot of work on this. But Chelsea, of course, working on Caicedo at the moment and are going to need to move fast for Lavia if they want him because Arsenal are serious, very, very serious about bringing these guys in to the Emirates Stadium. Of course, it's not just those two. They're looking at Julian Timber as well at Ajax at centre-back. They want to strengthen in that position. That became clear when Saliba got injured and Gabriel had to play with Rob Holding, who did OK, but it showed the lack of depth in there uh, for Arsenal. So that's been a key area that they've wanted to strengthen throughout this window and are now pushing on with uh, Julian Timber. They want to bring him in too, probably around the £40 million mark, and they're trying to get that one across the line also, and then of course there's Kai Havertz, which is pushing closer to completion. It will be around 60, maybe moving up to 65 million pounds. Chelsea have been a lot more flexible with Havertz than they are with Man United and Mount, for example, which we can talk about in a second. But that is also now getting much, much closer to being done. Arsenal confident that Havertz will be a player. Havertz confident he will be an Arsenal player. Personal terms all sorted on that. Havertz wanted the Arsenal deal, wanted the London stay and had no desire to leave to go to Germany. Although Bayern Munich obviously were sniffing about. We knew that there were German offers and they had, he had an interest when there was no clear Premier League path. As soon as that became available, bam, he wanted to go to Arsenal. Arsenal are on the verge of completing nearly £200 million worth of business for four players. If if they can get all these deals across the line because of course nothing's done until the player is signed, sealed, delivered, holding the shirt, right? But looking very, very, very positive for Arsenal fans. As for Chelsea, they obviously are pushing on with Moises Caicedo. That, those talks continue to go on. Caicedo will not be a target for Arsenal in this window. So Chelsea are clear. They do obviously have to watch Bayern Munich, they do have to watch other clubs who are circling around this, but Chelsea are clear to move for Caicedo. No, those talks ongoing need to make it clear there's been no players discussed as part of the deal. This is a straight cash transaction. No players discussed. Conor Gallagher, not in the discussions. Levi Colwell, not in the discussions. So that's clear for, for any fans that are worried or concerned about that. Of course, Brighton still want Levi Colwell. They're going to come back for him again. And Chelsea do not want to sell him. Point blank, he is not for sale as the line out of Chelsea Football Club. But Brighton do believe they have an opportunity, a chance to bring him in because they know playtime will be vital for Levi Colwell in making his decision as to where he plays in the next couple 
of months. And Chelsea will sit down and have a conversation with him, let him know his plans under Pochettino, how much play time he's going to get and offer him a new contract. So that's why Brighton will keep pushing. This could go on because as long as Chelsea have that conversation, if Cole wasn't happy, that then opens the door for Brighton potentially. But Chelsea continue to say he's not for sale, still got a lot of years left on his deal and they're not majorly, majorly concerned. We'll wait and see on that front. As for Manchester United, Rasmus Holland is one to watch out for here. We knew United liked him. He wants the Man United move. However, they could make a serious error on this because they have to move for him. Like we spoke about, Chelsea wanted Lavia, done a lot of work. Arsenal going to get him. We've seen it many times as well with the likes of Urgarte earlier in the window. And Man United want Holland and he wants to go to them. But Bayern Munich are extremely keen to bring him in and could move fast while Manchester United consider a bid, consider the structure of what they'd like to do at the time of recording this, Bayern Munich are ready to pounce. So Man United need that striker in there and that is their target. So if they want them, they're going to need to move because I make this reference all the time. All the teams are shopping in the same aisle of the shop and if you don't grab the item you want, someone else will come up behind you and get it. A goalkeeper also could be key or will likely be key for Manchester United. We know that they want a number two anyway. That could turn into a number one and they're in a good position for Andre Onana at Inter Milan. I'm still told Chelsea are not out of that race despite some other reports. Not here to down anyone else's reporting. I'm just still told that. However, Manchester United pushing for Andre Onana as well. Kyle Walker set to have contract talks with Manchester City. Spoke the other day about how there's many options on the table for Walker from Saudi, options on the table from England as well. Aston Villa very keen on Kyle Walker too. And there could be a possibility that he even moves to Paris Saint-Germain or into Spain as well. So watch this space with Kyle Walker. However, City wants to have contract talks. Ultimately, he wants to stay. Why wouldn't he? He's at a treble winning side under Pep Guardiola. I mean, it's clear that that is the place to be if you want to win trophies right now. But Kyle Walker will have those talks. And Manchester United, or Manchester City, excuse me, also closing in on Josep Gardiol at RB Leipzig. Gardiol is an unbelievable centre-back. Uh, and Manchester City have been long-term admirers. They're also pushing that deal as well. Could they come in and spoil the Declan Rice party for Arsenal? We'll wait and see, but they're pushing the deal for Guardiol at this point in time. Likely to be a world record fee for a defender. Every time you talk about Manchester City adding another player to that squad, it's <laughs> you do think, my goodness me, how on earth can anyone else compete? But certainly Arsenal are going for it. You're going to see Man United add Chelsea, are going to add Liverpool. We spoke about yesterday in a podcast with my colleague uh, David Lynch, Liverpool, fans, Liverpool, <laughs> Liverpool fans, excuse me. If you're watching this and you want to see that, it's on the channel now. You can find it on the channel. Other news as well, though. Burnley, Luton, news are coming up. You must be excited to be back in the Premier League. You're going to be bringing in a lot of players. Let me talk about Ryan Mami at Fernish Varos, the striker. Wanted by Luton is my understanding. They've asked for the conditions of the deal, which means they've spoken to the, the club and to the agents to understand what it would take to get him out of Fernish Varos. It'll probably be around the £5 million mark for his services. We know they want a striker, another one in there. We know that they've spoken to a number of people, but Mami starting to come into focus as a potential number one target so watch out for that i'll have news out on that in the coming days as well so keep an eye out for that luton fans not only that burnley burnley are going for it as well they've asked for koulibaly on loan from uh, dortmund center back defender strong quick somewhere that vincent company wants to add and that's ongoing too but not only that they also want some wingers in the side because we know that they've spoken to a number they spoke to ryan kent before he ended up at fernabachi for example ryan kent obviously left Rangers in the summer so look out for more coming in at Burnley under Vincent Company as well. How about Spurs though? A lot of work done with David Rea. So much work has been done and I mentioned the other day you've got to be quick like the other deals item in the aisle someone can come up and steal it behind you. Really interesting to see what happens here. Spurs have had talks ongoing they've agreed personal terms They've been in a confident position and the difference in price wasn't much. It was literally, you know, from 30 to 40 million, which I know is a 10 million pound difference, but we're talking Premier League money here. Spurs were not very keen to pay that because he's only got the year left on his contract. However, Brentford have been clear about the price. It's 40 million pounds and that's it. David Rea wants to leave his rejected contract offers. I think if Chelsea start to slip out of the Andre Onana race, 
I'd really watch them here for David Rea. I know that he has been on their list. I know that he's been looked at previously. So we know that there's a possibility if that becomes an option as the window rolls on, potentially, you could see something there. But it must be incredibly frustrating for Spurs fans when you know that the deal was there to be done, that your feet could still be done. It's not dead in the water yet. It could still be done. But certainly Spurs are playing with fire here. They want James Madison too. My understanding of that is Newcastle have been in strong position for Madison for a long time and well bid for him shortly. So it's a big window for Spurs, big window for, window for Daniel Levy. He's got Ange Postacoglu coming in there. They want pace, they want effort, they want athleticism, they want energy in that side. They're going to need it for the Ange Postacoglu system. Take that from a Scotsman who's watched Scottish football obviously all season and has seen what his team is all about. They need fresh legs, they need new energy and they are longly being spoken about as well with Barcelona. So that is one in the door at least. They will get another centre back in, potentially another full back in, they will get another winger in as well and even potentially a striker too and then of course that midfield area that is so important to manage Postacoglu because if Spurs come into this season with the same squad they've got now trying to play the Ange Postacoglu system, that could get very messy very, very quickly. So Spurs need to start pushing on and will start pushing on Spurs fans to bring in new bodies for the new manager. Had to do an update. Sorry you didn't get a morning review. So you've got a wee afternoon review instead because things are obviously picking up fast now. Like I said, we'll try and be here every morning. I'll try and be here every morning, Monday to Friday. Probably some weekends as we roll into the window as well. Make sure you like, add, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.